Welcome back. We are talking about the controversial comedy, The Interview, and whether any companies are going to step up now and help Sony Pictures get it seen, get it distributed to the American people. Netflix is not commenting this weekend. YouTube is not getting back to me about that. There are two obvious possibilities. I want to bring in some other voices in this conversation now. Variety co-editor-in-chief Andrew Wallenstein is back with us this week in Los Angeles. And in Miami, famed lawyer Alan Dershowitz, who has called this cyber attack at Sony Pearl Harbor on the First Amendment. And still with me here also, Gary Michael Walters, CEO of Bold Films. Thank you all for being here now. And let me start with you. Tell me about what you said on CNN earlier this week Pearl Harbor on the First Amendment. Why is it this? Well, this is a frontal attack on our freedoms. And remember, it's a diversified attack. It's a high-tech attack through the hacking, but it's also a low-tech attack through the threats. And it's not the first one. Remember that uh, Theo Van Gogh was murdered for producing a film called Submission, and his co-producer uh, was threatened with death and had to come to America. Uh, and um, my feeling is unless this film is seen now more widely than it ever would have been seen before, which is the message that has to be sent to North Korea. Mm. This is the beginning, and it's going to continue with Iran. Remember, Iran may develop nuclear weapons soon. They are much worse censors than North Korea. They're the ones who put the fatwa on Salman Rushdie, and we beat that because all the publishers got together and collectively published Salman Rushdie's book. If the Hollywood studios would do what the publishers did, and if we make sure that every time they try to censor, more people will see it, more people will read it, then it will backfire, and that will send the most powerful message. Alan, who do you blame for, for where we're at at this moment? You know, this time last week, we were all talking about those titillating emails about celebrities and, and executives, but so much has changed since then. Uh, Sony has canceled the movie. Now they're desperately seeking other partners to help get it out. Do you blame theater owners for being wary of this movie? Do you blame American citizens for, for maybe being too fearful of um, threats that don't seem to be backed up by actual capabilities? Who do you blame? I blame the media, uh, that is the Hollywood studios and the television stations and the radio and the movie theaters. They don't understand. They think they have a fiduciary obligation only to their stockholders. No. Everybody who is covered by the First Amendment, Sony, they have a fiduciary obligation to the First Amendment. And what they should have said on day one is, we may have to cancel the theatrical release, but let me tell you, North Korea, more people will see this film because of what you did than anything that would have happened had you not done this. We are not going to let you censor American films. That was the bottom line that should have been expressed. And it took too long to say it, and it mm. was done too weakly. And, you know, David Boy's a great lawyer, but he's been very vague about it. Andrew, you cover this every day. You're covering it for Variety. So why didn't Sony do what Alan's saying? I think you got to bring it back to the movie theaters. Uh, the First Amendment is one thing, but legal liability is something entirely mm -hmm. different. Let's not forget back in 2012, that tragic shooting in Aurora, Aurora, Colorado that left 12 dead. Just a few months ago, a federal judge indicated that the theater owners could be sued because mm -hmm. they should have foreseen such an incident could have occurred. If you think that was foreseeable, believe me, this could have also, here with the interview, be entirely foreseeable. That's what I think has the theaters running scared. I think I disagree completely with that. I think the First Amendment trumps any kind of liability. Any theater owner who says, we have a First Amendment obligation to show this film, the government has an obligation to protect us, would have been immune from liability. I don't think you can hide behind legal liability. The First Amendment trumps this kind of legal liability. Hey, Gary, I mentioned And so then the First the, uh, Amendment would have been a proper defense? Well, in this case, absolutely, because the government had an obligation to protect the theaters. In the other case, it was not anticipated. It wasn't the nature of the movie or anything like that. It was somebody who walked into a theater and killed. They should have had maybe better protection. Here we have a threat on the First Amendment, and it can't be that you have liability if you exercise your First Amendment right. Remember, the New York Times, the Washington Post, they were risking liability, too. They were risking criminal liability. They were risking financial liability. But they took it right to the government, and they said, we're going to publish the Pentagon Papers. N movie theaters are protected by the First Amendment, which means they have an obligation under the First Amendment. They are the guardians of the First Amendment in the first instance. Let me ask you, Gary, uh, because I mentioned right, in the Alan, last I think block. That the First Amendment protects... Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, government. Andrew, but I, I want to turn okay. to Gary because of something that happened two days ago that I found very interesting. 
Gary, you're back in business with Sony. You just uh, partnered with them on Friday, it was announced, for another film. And I'm curious how that came about. I mean, how are you even able to communicate with the studio given the, the attack that crippled them? Was it face-to-face? -face? Was it via fax? And why did you decide to still work with them uh, given all of this uncertainty? I think it's like Mark Twain said, the, the rumors of uh, Sony's demise are greatly exaggerated. They're a great company. They do a lot of great work. I've got a movie in the theaters with them now. We're glad to work with them again. We've got a project, a fantasy movie called Fire and Ice. I don't think we're going to offend anyone unless you're an evil ice wizard. I think we're safe there. But more seriously, I think the liability issue is a specious one, Andrew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Boston Marathon was bombed and ran again. Office buildings were bombed on 9-11. I go into an office building every day. Airlines were taken down. Reasonable measures were taken to ensure the safety of the American people. I would mm -hmm. never not focus on the safety of the public, but we can't cower every time some third-generation dynastic dictator of a tottering totalitarian regime makes an empty threat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the fact is that the interview shows the strength of America. The fact that this government is so preoccupied with the efforts of Seth Rogen and James Franco, who I hope don't end up rooming with Salman Rushdie. But, you know, the, we've got to stand tall. We're America. We're the most powerful, dynamic country in the history of the world and our culture is our great asset and it's used to change regimes and we need to stand tall so Alan I believe everyone has an obligation as an American to stand tall the First Amendment protects us from the government but that doesn't mean that we are going to self-regulate the American soul mm -hmm. into some fearful place. That well, that's what we tragic. should also I, address, Gary, because I, when I was reading about your, your latest project with Sony, here's the first comment that I saw on Deadline.com, the first comment on the story about it. It said, God, I hope they ask North Korea for permission this time. It's that kind of thing that I makes people think about precedence in the future. I will never for permission for me or any of my artists, ever. Yeah, I, I agree with that. We you are know, a defender a of artists' rights. That's our sole mission as you, financers of independent feature film. Alan, I hear you chiming in. A year ago, I wrote in, in my book, Taking the Stand, that the greatest danger to the First Amendment is going to come in the future from self-censorship. Uh, mm -hmm. I worry even more from self-censorship totally. from Islamic extremists. This is only a coming attraction to what we're going to get from Iran. Remember, this dictator managed to do what no American president can do, that is censor a film because of its content. And we must fight back. And the answer has to be, as it always is, if you try to center, it will backfire. More people will see, more people will read, we will fight fire with fire, picture, and man. we will use the government. Yeah, Let me I, ask I you, uh, because I'm movie. coming up against the heartbreak in about 15 seconds. Andrew, a week from now, is this movie going to have some sort of distribution deal in place? I'd be surprised to see it happen that imminently, but I do think Sony wants to strike while the iron is hot. There's a lot of controversy generating publicity. They spent a lot of marketing money. I think they want to make it happen soon. I agree with you. I think we're all going to see this movie at some point. Well, all three of you, thank you for sure being here. So. I really appreciate it this thank morning. You.